be in this conversation, you have to execute from day one through the conference tournament. And I'm proud for the guys in that room being recognized as a, as a top eight seed. The schedule from start to finish, the difficulty in the middle of the week, the challenge within the league, the challenge in the conference tournament, they earned that. And it's not easy to be in this position. I'm proud of what those, what those kids have done, our coaching staff. And now you get to turn your attention to, to hosting an event, which is exciting. I think when you look at the overall bracketing, I think our regional is as hard as anybody's. You have three really, really good teams coming in here. I mean really good. Stetson is a strong team. Uh, UCF, talented. Two of our former Notre Dame players are on UCF squad, and Rich was with me at Notre Dame. He was with us here at Florida State last year. Great recruiter, great coach. The University of Alabama, we played them in the fall. We know that roster. Everybody knows what they've been through in their league. It's, it's really a challenge for them to manage the weekends and some of the stretch runs you have to have in that league. And our schedule and the performance by our team, you guys are familiar with that. I'm proud of where we are. We deserve to be in this position. But what you're going to see out here this weekend is very difficult. That's a, I've, I've hosted regionals at four different schools, and this is as tough as I've seen as a draw in a regional. These are four good teams. It'll be tough start to finish. You've, uh, you've been on the other side of it to know that being a top eight seed doesn't guarantee you anything. Uh, but but it, what does it mean? Is it just the reward or getting to play home? Or what's the excitement about getting it? Well, right now you feel like it's a reward, especially coming off of what we dealt with yesterday in the, in the game. The big picture for me is the most important thing. And we approach every one of our games, in essence, to get to this moment. If you don't take care of business on the front end, on your weekends, in the middle of the week, those midweek games are tough, tough, tough here. And then you piggyback that right into either coming off of an ACC weekend or entering one. The stress on the bullpen, very difficult. So this is a, this is a reward. And if you do your job and continue to play well, like you look to be at home two weekends in a row, which it's easier to, to win in your home park. Any coach will tell you that. You're familiar with it. You have the fans here on your side. And our fans impact what goes on. And we will need them to be impactful this weekend as they have all year. So right now, this is a reward. Now, when you strap it on, I guess, what did they say, noon on Friday, then the reward's over. Like, now you have a really talented Stetson team. I think they won 40 games in your face, and they're really good, and we've seen it, and they beat us. They could have beat us twice. So we know we have our hands full. Given, uh, I mean, what you've gone through really all year since before they started with the, the pitching and just the, how that depth has been packed, how you dealt with guys out and stuff like that, does that make this even a little sweeter, getting that top eight, kind of overcoming that so, so well? It does. The pitching situation was tough. There was a period of time when I was watching what we were doing on the field, and I thought it was as complete a team as I've ever coached. And it's clearly still a really good team. When we had Leiter and Arnold and Witt and Barrett all healthy, this was a unique staff. Now it remains that because I think we now have nine pitchers that have recorded saves. You look at the depth of the staff overall and how guys have absorbed some of the innings that we clearly lost when a couple of your starting pitchers spent significant time out. So that's how I view the pitching, and I'm proud of, of how the guys stepped into different roles. And it wasn't perfect. I think there's other teams that would tell you they're in a similar situation with absorbing damages to the pitching staff, but you have to have enough depth and talent to overcome that. What do you remember about Alabama from that 12 inning very aggressive left-handed bats. Now, that, there's a lot going on, Brett, when you look back. I was trying to figure out what we look like more than what they look like. But they had some really talented, aggressive left-handed hitters. And then the depth of the pitching staff. Like, those were short little sprint outings for our team and for theirs. I know they had some arm injuries early, as did we. So I think what they have now, I'm not as familiar with as what they had in the fall. 
in the fall, top to bottom, really good, really clean. Jason Jackson is a is a close friend of mine from Tallahassee. We went to the same high school. So we talk a lot about teams. Now, we don't break down each other's teams to the degree of me knowing the ins and outs of his guys' sliders and change-ups, but they're going to be very well coached. They've played in an environment. All of these teams have played in environments that are not going to be – different than than what they're going to see here so UCF sees it Stetson clearly sees it and Alabama obviously sees it so I remember the aggressiveness physicality and I just remember arm after arm after arm that was talented and in a variety of different looks on the mound but very talented indeed you talked about the familiarity I guess what are the advantages and disadvantages of the whole four seed and opening game against a team that you played twice already this year well, you know the lineup, and you know some of the pitching. Now, we, we haven't seen their weekend arms, nor have they seen ours. But that's a difficult team. That is a tough, tough, tough team. Tough. You don't win 40 games in this state. You know, I, I, don't, I can't tell you everything about their conference. In these conferences with so much movement, it's hard to dissect, you know, who plays who and – how that shapes out. I just know they're very complete. Like they're athletic, they run the bases, and they have arm depth. So aside from the weekend arms, which we'll dive into today and try to prepare as, as we move along to the week, I just know that that's a tough draw. They're a very, very good team. You talked talk about the reward of getting to be at home. How special is it to have taken this team from where you were at last year to get these fans back in the stands for a regional here at home? Well, when I look back at what was happening a year ago today, essentially the recruiting is 80% of this. You have to try to bring the correct players and people into the program. You have to. The roster has to be right. And that's what was going on last year to try to put us in the position we're in now. It's not easy. And I was also fortunate, I say fortunate, that two of the assistant coaches that I was with at Notre Dame and that joined me here last year got head coaching jobs. Rich and Chuck, they deserved them. They're great jobs. I mean, Rich has one of the best jobs in the country. Chuck, Naval Academy head coach, beautiful, outstanding position. There was a lot going on this time last year. So I'm proud of what the program was able to do to put this roster together and then manage 26 new players trying to figure out how to play together. Going through the adversity, going through some, some tough weekends, some very exciting midweek things, some tough midweek losses, the guys responded. And I think when you look back at how this year started, the response to last year was this group won 19 games in a row. So when you go a third of the season and don't lose, the players start to understand what they're capable of and what this can look like as you move down the stretch. And, that, and now they see that. They said on the broadcast yesterday, has this team been sending you Mariano Rivera pictures? I guess, uh, well, is there optimism? I know he was doing some work in Charlotte pregame. Is there optimism we might have some kind of limited bullpen role this weekend? Yeah, now he's chomping at the bit. As the whole lunch in there was him telling me he's ready to go and this and that. So we need to get him another good bullpen session, so we'll lengthen that out again for him. He'll throw a little bit today and then prep for, for his bullpen Wednesday. If things hold true to how we have planned this and how he feels, then he'll be available this weekend. Not to start, but in any way that we can involve him in it, you, you know it's a really high power weaponized arm. So we'll see how the next several days go, but that's the hope and plan. What are, what are some of the factors that go into your decision about who to start? Well, we know the teams fairly well, and you, you have to be in a position to win these games. And I, I'll look at that. You, you, have to, you have to win them. And if you don't, it becomes difficult. So where to use Jamie and then Dorsey and Witt and the rest of the crew? Like, we have enough. I, I don't know if I'm ready to start down the road of how to manage the entry to the tournament. My experience in this is, is you need to try to win. Like once you fall into the loser side of that, it becomes a more challenging roadmap 
to victory. So that's what I can tell you now. We haven't had time to unpack what makes the most sense. Fortunately, everybody is relatively fresh and healthy, so that does give you some options. There are situations where you may not have the luxury of deciding what to do. At least we're in that position, but I feel like we have to try to do things to put ourselves in a position to stay in the winter side. Turn at noon. Uh, what is that? Ten paces turn and fire. Um, I actually prefer the earlier game because you know what you're dealing with on the back end of the day. If you get through that game, you have some time to recover and rest. The weather impacts you a lot this time of year, and sometimes those afternoon and evening games get pushed back. So I've been on both sides of this, and we actually wanted to play the earlier game on Friday. So by design, I, I like that. Now, noon is earlier than 1, but if that's what it has to be, then that may be what it is. But I do like to get out of the gates and play that first game Friday. I think it's a better mechanism for the team to function throughout the weekend.